This is Ray's Grid, a normal Minecraft world with 99% of all blocks removed. Despite its extremeness, everything is still possible. With the goal of this series to obtain every advancement, item, as well as mob. Watch the series from the beginning with a link down below, as well as learn how you can actually join us in this world. In the previous episode of Ray's Grid, we killed and collected shulkers as well as silverfish for the advancement and the mob zoo. Then we went on an extreme item collection, trying to fill out as many items as possible for the museum, finishing up all the items with the letter C, and then collecting all items starting with the letter M through O. Oh my goodness, this looks amazing! Wow! Guys, look at this! I just I cannot believe like the way these textures go together. That looks so cool, and you got the, the cool display cases. So this is for the Nether mobs. So on the overworld, we're storing the overworld mobs, and the Nether, Chichike wants to have a special display which he has designed and built over here. So you got Wither Skeleton, Ghast, Blaze. Over here is Hoglin, adult version of it. Also a baby Zoglins. Magma cubes with three different sizes. Striders. Ones with saddles, other variations of them. And we also got piglins. And a bunch of different variations, including with the brute, and of course there's the zombified piglin and their variations. Dude, this place looks so cool! But yep, here you go. Now you, now, now you can move the mobs and stuff over Yay. as you like. So now that we have a zoo to house the nether mobs on the nether side, we can actually transport these over there and put them into their individual holding cells. For now we're all set up, we got like this little path to the Zoglin cage and we're gonna go ahead and try to move it over. And here goes nothing, it's coming after me. Okay, it went through. Oh, oh we don't want it to go back to the overworld. While it's trying to attack me, I'll get it closer to the cage and then we can place some blocks in behind it. Even though it can see us on the backside, it's not actually trying to get to us because apparently it doesn't think it can walk up these slabs. Only by grabbing it with a lead and pulling on it really far were we able to get it inside of its cage. Okay, I think it's contained. <laughs> nice job, guys. Okay, next up we got some of these little fellows. <laughs> And they should be fairly easy to move. Come on, over to the nether. From the nether they came, to the nether they go. Dang, they move so slow. So where does this one go? Strider, okay. Come on, Strider. They move so slow. Your new home. Strider complete. Okay, let's go ahead and complete that one by turning it green and we'll also do this for the Zoglin adult. The next up we're gonna move the Zombie Piglin over into the zoo. Okay, got it to the boat. Cool. We'll take that over to the portal. Moldy Bacon. <laughs> what a funny name. Almost. There it goes. Okay, so it's on this side. No matter what side he's on, I guess. Put him in a boat. Okay, let's get this piglin into their display. They go. The zombie piglet checked off our list. Okay, so we found a baby magma cube. Let's go ahead and take this over to the museum. Do they take? They don't take fall damage, do they? What the heck? Wait, how's this piglet not mad at us? Oh, now he's mad at us. Ow! I don't think it's gonna take fall damage right? because they're magma cubes. Oh, but the portals are here. <laughs> uh, okay, awesome. Fast thinking. Guys, I have a boat, so I can't go through the portal. So we got the magma by his display. Now let's see if we can get inside. By standing in the cage, it tries to come after me, but little does it know I'm gonna do the switcheroo and catch it inside. So, we got a named squishy third. Let's go ahead and name it the name tag. Let's see if we can click on it without it hopping out. Take the name. There you go. Awesome. And we'll mark it green as complete. So we got ourselves a piglin with a crossbow, so it goes in here. After trying several different ways to trick the piglin into going to its cage. <laughs> okay, I guess that's one way to do it. <laughs> Just box him. <laughs> piglin complete as well. So next up, we're gonna move the blaze 
And we're gonna try to just hop in the boat, take some fire resistance and scoot it over there. Uh, we got a couple of people that are gonna put out fires in case it starts fires around here because we don't have fire tick off. So any wood could go ablaze. And uh, hopefully they don't also hit any mobs. We'll give it a try. Take fire resistance. Up in there. Oh, I forgot about the, the thorns effect. Wait, I can't, I can't eat. Ah! No, 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 no. I do have a totem, but I just don't want to use it. Oh, took a little bit of suffocation damage. Let's go block it off. Okay, did it catch any, is there any other fires? Yeah, moss is fire resistance. We just gotta be pay attention to other things. Oh my goodness, the iron golem! The iron golem's on fire. Where's the fire department? I specifically asked you guys to help. Okay, we're almost there, guys. Let's, let's completely case this. So it has nowhere to escape. I think I think we're good to go to release it. You guys ready to catch it in the nether side? Okay, it's in the nether. Oh, I'm, oh no! Okay, main thing is block the portal off. Okay, it's, it's, it's inside of the boat. That's awesome. Let's get them a bit closer. Everything else is good. Let's remove that. And yeah, I think it's contained. Awesome job, guys. We can color green as complete. Next up is the piglin brute. We have it stored up above. I think we're just going to knock out the floor and see if we can drop it all the way down. So we got the brute over there and we're going to try to drop it down here. Let's go ahead and give it a try. Get it out of the boat and... Block it off. You got some slime down there. <laughs> Look at it bouncing the slime. Oh, that's so funny. Okay, I'm going to close it off. If someone wants to close it off completely, I think we got it captured. Look at that. Piglin brute completed. I think we're ready to move the gas. There's the hole. We got a nice little rail system linking around this entire thing. And it goes all the way over there and the gas is up there. And we'll drop it down through the hole. Okay, let's see if we can pick it up. I got the minecart there, the button. And yes, it's going down. Everybody stand clear. And oh no, it got out of its cart somehow. I think it shot. Oh no, I guess it didn't shot. It was just midair. Okay, and we'll block this all in. That was scary. It's not suffocating. That's good. We did something right for once. Yay, we got the gas in there. So gas is complete. So all the current nether mobs that we had stored nearby, we got them in their showcases. Over here in the overworld, we still have some other mobs which we can put into the zoo, which is just underneath the bus. Let's go ahead and see if we can try to move the phantom. There it goes. Hopefully that moves nice and safely. Minecart picked up the boat. The boat is holding the phantom. Oh, okay. Mm, that's not quite what we wanted. Yeah, go down this hole. <laughs> don't suffocate. Oh, don't go too far. Where are you going? They try to run away from the cats. Oh, whoopsies. Oh my gosh! I try to hit the. I try to move my way. Okay, Santa, go the other way. There it goes. All the way over to here. Hey, it's inside. Now comes the tricky part. I need to get it out of the boat, I guess? Yeah, I just need. There. Now the phantom is also completed. Let's grab the next one. Well, I got the cyan parrot into its little cell, but I'm stuck in with it as well. <laughs> there it goes. Oh, we went ahead and also moved the red mushroom down here so we can complete that one as well. Oh wait, that's red fox. <laughs> Whoopsies, it's supposed to go over here. 
Okay, now we have the red mushroom in the right place. <laughs> Complete. We made a lot of progress on collecting every mob possible. Let's switch it up and see how close we are to putting every single item in the game on display. So for the museum, we need to get one of every item. That means every single type of potion as well. So we need to first start out by getting some water bottles. And we can get the glass just from our raid farm and witches. We also got another word early on so we could make ourselves aqua potions. Aqua potions can then be used to make all the different types of normal drinkable potions. First off, we'll do swiftness potions. This is from our sugar cane farm, producing us sugar. Another potion type needs rabbit's feet, and we've been getting those just by sleeping with cats nearby. And they should be able to give us gifts in the morning. Look at that. <laughs> Got some raw chicken for them. And then we'll use the rabbit's feet from my cat gift farm. And the blaze power from our nether fortress farm. This will get us the leaping potions and the strength potions. Next up, we'll put our melon and gold to good use, as well as our spider eyes from our mob farm. This gets us healing potions, as well as poison. Using our gas tears from our gas farm, and our magma cream from our magma cube farm, this gets us regen potions, as well as fire resistance. Then if we use our puffer fish from our fish farm, as well as gold carrots from our carrot farm, we can get ourselves water breathing potions and night vision. And if we use our phantom membranes from phantoms, we can get slow falling potions. And if we use fermented spider eyes with normal water bottles, we can get weakness potions. Now the last type of potions we can get by taking swiftness, poison, as well as night vision and corrupting it using a fermented spider eye. This gets us slowness, damage, as well as invisibility. Now that we have all the different types of potions, we now need to make the different timings for them, as well as the different strengths. So the way I remember this is redstone makes the potions last longer because redstone signals can go long and glowstone makes them stronger. So now we need to make some of the versions of these potions into longer versions. So I'm putting them in and then I'm adding the redstone dust. So this will convert the times from around 1 minute 30 seconds to 4 minutes. We also need a stronger version of some potions. Let's go ahead and use glowstone for that. This will make stuff such as like strength, regen, and speed be stronger using a level 2. So we're slowly filling in the chest. We're corrupting ones that need to be corrupted. We're making ones longer. We're also making ones stronger. So we are down to having some more swiftness potions converted into slowness. We need to make some of them to be longer. That will get us some longer versions. And then we also need to get one slowness to be stronger. And with that slowness, we now filled up this entire shulker box. Now the only thing left is to put in the turtle master ones. So to get turtle shells, we'll go ahead and breed up some turtles. And then they'll produce babies, which will produce the scoots. We'll come back later to collect the scoots. So after a lot of rinsing and repeating, we now have a whole section just for every type of drinkable potion, stronger, as well as longer, as well as corrupted. And we have a second version just for us to now convert down into splash versions because that's a different whole type of potion. So every one of these has to be converted into splash. Slowly we're pulling them out of the chest and converting them to splash and then putting them back into the correct order. So after much grinding we now got all the different types of splash variations. So now that we got the drinkable types as well as the splash type we need to make the next variation <laughs> which is the lingering type. So the way this is done is by collecting dragon's breath and then after converting the potions into the splash variations, we can add in the dragon's breath and we acquired plenty of that during the fight with the dragon. And with it, we're able to convert splash into the lingering variations. And we'll need to do this for all the different types of potions. So we have to make them all over again. We also need to make mundane potions, which start out just with water potions, and we put an ingredient in here. And these are usually obtained when you accidentally mess up. So we go ahead and made a normal mundane, and now we'll save one of those and then convert the rest over to splash. We also need to make some thick potions. These are done by accidentally putting in glowstone. Kind of another potion that's a mistake potion. So let's put in the mundane. We got the normal one. We also got the splash one. So let's put in the thick ones. So we got the normal potion here. We got the splash one right there. And the lingering goes there. So now that we have all the different types of potions, let's go ahead and place them in their appropriate locations. Oh my, okay. We got all the different types of potions in their individual locations. There is a whole ton of them. And these are just the normal potions. We still need to place in all of the different types of splash ones. So now we're down the splash potion alley and there's a lot of them. All these signs need to be filled up. So let's go ahead and start adding them. So 
So we got the majority of the splash ones completed as well. So now we need to place in all of the lingering potions. And this is the last major lingering potion. Look at all those lingering potions. It looks amazing. So in the meanwhile, we finally got around to be able to get enough scoots to make a turtle shell helmet. And we can go ahead and throw that into our brewing stand with our awkward potions. And then this will make the potion of turtle master. We'll save one and then make the rest into splash. And we'll save one to splash and then make the final one into a lingering. Then all you have to do is make one of these splash potions longer as well as one to be stronger. So by putting in these last potions, we're able to finish off all the different types of potions. Oh my goodness, that took so long. <laughs> and I didn't even do all the work. Thanks so much to Sandstorm as well as Dev who helped me out with this. A big undertaking. It's a large amount of the museum is just dedicated to potion types and all the variations. We got a lot of the items obtained now, which means some of the last ones are going to be the most challenging ones to get. Same thing for the mob zoo. We've been leaving the hardest for last. If you haven't already seen my merch page, it is linked with my YouTube. You can find it down below the video or on the store tab on my YouTube channel. And thanks to everyone who's already purchased some. The image on it is a custom design of Gordy, which is the pumpkin headed guy that is my avatar. And let me know what other Raiseworks themed merchandise would you like to see in the future. And if you're a supporter, you get tons of perks and one of them includes a discount on the merch and even your name at the end of the videos. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you in the next episode of Raise Grid.